This is Singapore in the 1950s, and this is Singapore now. Since the 1960s, Singapore has grown into one of the world's most important economic hubs, and a big part of being able to handle that growth is how it was literally able to create its own land. I mean, to put it into perspective, it's now 22% bigger than it was before the 60s. But thanks to rising sea levels, Singapore and a bunch of that land is now at risk. And to survive it, it's going to need help from a bunch of people on the other side of the world. The Dutch. $100 billion, a 50 to 100 year solution. Now I'm not going to be going to Singapore or the Netherlands for this video, so I'm going to need some help from my friends and the sponsor of this video, Storyblocks. So just quickly, Storyblocks is the best. Whenever I need some solid royalty-free stock footage from around the world, I head straight to Storyblocks, and you know what? They always have me covered. They have a massive range of stock footage and stock assets from things like shots of animals to rocket launches, all the way to places like Singapore. I'll talk more about them at the end because I've just found a solid shot of Singapore, so let's crack on with the video. So Singapore is a pretty low-lying place. A third of it is less than five meters above sea level, and it's an island state, so it's just surrounded by water. But sea levels around the world are expected to rise by about a meter by 2100. And seeing as Singapore is near the equator, it's got a good chance of experiencing even more than that potentially three to eight meters more when there are storm surges. So obviously it's got a problem, especially considering when one of the areas at risk is its business district. And that is why Singapore isn't holding back. They're throwing a hundred billion Singaporean dollars at the problem to solve it now before it's too late. First up, they're building massive defenses around the coastlines. They're using a mixture of natural defenses like mangrove forests that can act as a buffer to sea level rise, and also hard engineering ideas like seawalls and stone embankments that alone are gonna cover up to like 80% of Singapore's coast. All of these ideas are literally gonna be like barriers to the sea as it rises, so pretty simple to understand. But they've also got some ideas that are a little bit more extreme and are a whole load more Dutch. There's a saying that God created the world, but the Dutch created the Netherlands. And that's fair, seeing as they essentially built their country on top of the ocean. 17% of the Netherlands is actually land that's been reclaimed from sea or lakes. And through building complex dams, dikes, and seawalls, they've managed to protect the country from floods and manipulate rivers and oceans to fit their needs. They are the masters of this stuff, and they even have the world's largest artificial island, and it's called Flavopolder. Sorry if I massively butchered that name. Which is 970 kilometers squared, which is bigger than New York. And the technique that they're famous for is creating polders. This is where a massive wall called a dike is built to enclose a body of water. The water is then pumped out, leaving you with usable land called a polder. They've built around 3,000 of these polders over the last few centuries. And that's actually why the Netherlands are covered in windmills, because they were the traditional machines that were used to actually pump out the water. And the land that's left behind after doing this can be really fertile, which is why the Netherlands has become one of the world's biggest exporters of food, despite being a pretty tiny country on a map. All right, but land reclamation is not anything new to Singapore. They've been doing it for years too, and they're not messing around. So far, they've been using traditional techniques of just literally filling in areas of ocean or marshland with materials like sand until you've got a surface that is above sea level which is the same basic idea that's used for things like the giant palm islands in Dubai. And even those famous sites of Singapore that you probably know, like Gardens by the Bay and Marina Sands, they're all built on an area that just a few decades ago was just ocean. There was no land there. But those Dutch polders are cheaper up front, they use a whole load less materials like sand, and seeing as they rely on creating massive structures like dikes and pumps and drainage systems to keep the water out, it's got that future-proofing against sea level rise just built into the design. So Singapore's idea is to learn from the Dutch and maybe they could become a master of this technique themselves and ultimately encircle the entire island state with dikes that connect islands and protect land both old and new that's created in the process. They're starting with an island called Tikong Island and with the help of Dutch experts, they're gonna be creating a 10 kilometer long dike and a polder that will increase Singapore's size by 1%. And that's just the beginning, because all of Singapore's plans are long term. Because this is a 50 to 100 year problem, we can implement a 50 to 100 year solution to this problem. Which honestly, I can get behind that. 
The best solution to climate change will always be to mitigate it and act now and just stop the bad things from even happening in the first place. But even in the best case scenarios right now, there is always gonna be some form of need for us to adapt to some changes. But obviously there are some downsides, like land reclamation is super destructive to multiple ecosystems and can cause some to be irreversibly destroyed. And there are probably some better, more nature-based approaches that Singapore could take. But I still really like the idea of treating a 100-year problem with a 100-year well-thought-out solution, whilst also doing everything we can to mitigate the bad stuff. And I'd be keen to see a load more countries around the world take this long-term, level-headed approach. Now talking about a bunch of countries around the world, imagine if I needed some footage from like Australia or Brazil or South Africa. Well, for a way more affordable price than all of those plane tickets, I can get all the footage I need straight from Storyblocks. I use their unlimited plan, which gives me unlimited downloads of their entire library. And honestly, I'd massively recommend it. So check them out at storyblocks.com forward slash Tom Carroll or just hit the link that's down below and save yourself a bunch of time, money and stress about all of those international shots that you need. And thanks again to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. And thanks a lot to you for watching. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you're not already and I will see you in the next one, my friends.